All right, Marshawn Lynch, you know, was on Club Shay Shay. He opened up about not messing with Russell Wilson and not messing with, uh, you know, um, Pete Carroll, right? Uh, so he talked about, you know, them kind of not messing with each other, whatever. So, and how that alienated people. And I think what this story kind of confirmed for most people was why, uh, You know, uh, the Seattle locker room being like Russell Wilson. You heard rumors about them playing Future, thought it was a drought. And if you don't know that song, that's his best album that I heard, in my opinion. Dirty Sprite 2, and it's the song where it said, I just, you know, pounded your girl in some Gucci flip-flops. And they was playing that in the locker room. That was a rumor. You know, um, so. But, uh. But yeah, you know, it was rumored about this tension. It was rumored about how he blocked people's number. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't return their phone calls. And, you know, at the end of the day, dude, you know, uh, you probably can, you know, tell that, uh, that, uh, that Russell Wilson kind of come off as a little uppity, uh, arrogant. Um, he kind of give off those type of vibes, bro. You know, um, this is why people question his blackness and all that, and and because they feel like black people should act in a stereotypical way, which we just like any other, you know, people that you find on the street. You got some people that's proper. You got some people that's a little bit more ebonics and hood. You got some people that's that's literally in the middle, who can do both, or who has versatility. So you really can't judge a book by its cover. It's some dudes who you think is just straight street, straight ghetto you have a conversation with them and they be one of the most knowledgeable people that you ever meet. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to sit out here and judge a lot of these, you know, you know, people in general, no matter where you're from, by they cover. You can talk to a, a homeless guy. He got more knowledge than the guy that's working at, on, on Wall Street. Life isn't fair. You know, life isn't fair. But, um, but he kind of comes off as that in a lot of people's opinion. And is that unfortunate? Absolutely. But once somebody is like that, that's just who they are. You, you, you can't change them. You can't change them. You can't change that man. And that alienated the locker room. And apparently him and Pete was very close. And then if him and Pete was that close and Pete was taking Russell's side, over the other over the defense in the locker room side and was there some some jealousy there of course it's jealousy there people naturally get jealous and then what happens from there it turns to hatred i tell you that all the time it's cool to be jealous let your jealousy motivate you but one thing it ain't cool to be is a fucking hater because what you find is a lot of dudes that hate it's really for nothing it's really out of like me why he got this and i don't got this why she like him and she don't and she don't and he and she don't like me? <laughs> you know, that's what it come off as. I see, I see it all the time, bro. Oh man, she messing with that ham ass nigga, man. You know, I'm just not one to do that. Hey, he obviously he doing something right that you ain't doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I you know, I just never played those games. But uh check out the NFL talk play the NFL playlist. Uh so he says, candidly, Lynn said, I respect Wilson as a player and as a teammate. I'll take Russ. I'll put him, him at quarterback, and I'll rock with him because I've done that, said Lynch. He said, but according to Lynch, anything any anything he say might be taken with malice because of the, the fallout of the, from the goal line, interception Wilson threw in Super Bowl, whatever that is, led to the Seahawks 28-24 defeat in New England and contributed to Wilson's eventual departure to the Broncos is in terms of a relationship, Lynch said him and Wilson didn't have off the field. Can't pick up the phone or call old boy for nothing, Lynch said. So um, he said, according to Lynch, he asked team, player, personnel, staff, and Wilson's number to, uh, to offer support. The staff promised to look into uh, it and later call Lynch back to see if he got a call from Wilson. Lynch responded that he hadn't spoken with Wilson, but he received a call from a, a caller ID block. I don't know how or why it was blocked, but I just know I got a call from a blocked number, said Lynch. Lynch and Wilson eventually spoke, but the conversation didn't go the way Lynch expected. He tried 
He said he tried to let Wilson know that he had his back, but Wilson responded, surprised him, considered that uh, we're on the same team, going for, for it on the same goal, and this is how you choose to respond to me. He recalled it was more so like maybe you don't understand what I'm saying, okay? Um, so that's one aspect of it. Uh, later in the podcast, here we go, he cited a preferential treatment from uh, Carol to Wilson as a reason for tension within the team. You're kind of putting him on the pedestal or – outside the box, Lynn said, and it's also like he doesn't have to be held accountable to the same ish we do. So, all right, man, so we can, we, we going to unpack this, right? So the whole thing about the conversation, it don't sound like Russell Wilson fucked with Marshawn Lynch. And Marshawn is one of the realest, one of the realest in it. You already know. Um, so, you know, he tried to support him and maybe, you know, uh, Russell Wilson felt like, the team never accepted him the way they should have. So he said, well, they don't fuck with me. I ain't going to fuck with y'all. And I don't do that fake shit. So that's kind of what it sounded like to me. And I respect that. But, you know, I used to think like that, bro. But when you go into the place of employment, you got to put the fake face on. It's just what it is. You got to do what you got to do to feed your family. And I had to learn that, too. You got to. You got to put that fake face on. You know, you got to laugh at the corny jokes. You can't you can't get out of character because that's what they want, especially when you're a person of color. So, yeah, especially when you're a person of color. So you can't do that, bro. So you got to talk to these people. You got to speak to these people. You have to you have to carry on like it's business as usual. You know, you got to, you know, take the team out. CJ Stroud, invite the whole team over to his house every week. To have to have to have dinner, you know, to have dinner. So, you know, but him showing preferential treatment, that'll do it. That'll do it. You know, when they when 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 you, you know your kids that been there before Russell Wilson, you know, and then you start treating Russell different, that's because you and Russell got a close relationship. You know, and everybody looking like, well, why are you treating this dude like this? And we got to do this and we got to do that. That's how hating start. I told y'all not be at the job and stuff. So I, you know, I had an understanding when I got hired, I can leave at a certain time on a certain day where I can, you know, I can work through my lunch and I can be gone, you know, and then people start hating. Instead of coming and asking and asking who, what, where, why. So then they change the policy. That's why policies get changed that worked all the, uh, at work all the time. You know, you have a great policy in place and somebody get the bitching and complaining about the policy because they don't feel like the policy is working in their favor like it should work in their favor, then they take it away. It's no different. It's no, it's no different here. It's no different here. Listen to me. It's no different. It's no different. Oh, man, Russell get to do this or... And he making us practice all hard and shit and this, that, and the third. I'm telling you. That's where the hating started at. Oh, he just got here. He a rookie. I don't care if he's the quarterback. We can do, we can get Matt Flynn and we can still go win the championship. We don't need Russell Wilson. And they started bonding together to bond against Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. But my whole thing is if Pete was showing Russell that amount of love, why did Pete turn? Why did Russell turn on Pete? That's my million dollar question. Why did he turn on Pete Carroll then? Over a couple of dollars? That's wild to me. That's super wild. So that is what it is, man. And, you know, unfortunately, dude, um, when somebody get preferential treatment, and I, I already tell how this happened. You know, Russell and Pete got close. You know, Pete started letting Russell do things that everybody else couldn't do and uh, didn't do and start getting preferential treatment. They start hating. They resented Russell Wilson. It became a defense versus offense thing. They bonded, they trauma bonded together on Russell, and that's what it was. So imagine if you know, you know, imagine if they all just you know that didn't happen. So it's how it go, bro. You see it every day in corporate America. But hey, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Uh, uh, hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live or drop the video financially. Uh, want to support the channel? Cash up dollar sign CJ good 313. 
Venmo said it's 313 PayPal link in the description. All that's in the description. Find me on Apple Podcast, Amazon, uh, Music, Google Podcast, the whole nine. Appreciate y'all. Check out the NFL playlist for more videos like this. Peace.